there is broadly a non-Congress mood in the country or an anti-Congress mood. Parties which are which occupy the non-Congress space in their states are going to be the natural beneficiaries. So you'll have the BJP as a beneficiary in some, you may have some other parties as a beneficiary and these are the parties which are going to be. A national alliance today can only be anchored either by the Congress or the BJP. It can't be anchored. There doesn't seem to be a viable third party which can anchor. Or at least even if they try and anchor it, it can't be of any sustainability or longevity. In this situation, I think today parties are in a positioning exercise. Of course, our effort also is to bring as many people as we can on our side. But I think uh, the last word on that has not been spoken because it is inherently very difficult for a number of parties which occupy the non-Congress space in their states to get into a national alliance with the Congress in a coalition and yet say we maintain the non-Congress credentials in our own state and a strong anti-Congress mood in other parts of the country. When the fall takes place, it could be shockingly low. And therefore, when the alternative to the Congress in every state gains, then you don't have a 10-seat difference between them. Then you have a, a difference which is much more than expected. Obviously, some other parties will also gain which yeah. occupy the non-Congress yeah, space. Yeah, but then, your, your hypothesis is one contradiction, which is, all the others don't come together. You have the pro-Congress ones amongst them, you have the strongly non-Congress ones amongst them, and therefore each has to choose his own coalition. Now who anchors the coalition? We are in an era of coalition, so who anchors the coalition? Now can it be a party with 20-25 seats? No, I, I agree with no, you. Therefore, therefore, inherently, India's responsible coalition politics has to have a party between 150 to 180 or 200 seats who anchors the coalition. That's the only stable coalition. These coalitions have been stable when larger parties have anchored them. When these chota parties anchor them, the coalition inherently is unstable. You can have a, some romanticism with those ideas which can last a few months, but certainly not much more. No, 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 no,
as a whole, it's, it, 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 it's reasonably, it, it's quite active. In Parliament, we give a serious trouble to the government. I think the issues before us is the one which he asked, uh, are really two. And these are two challenges. A, at some appropriate stage, we have to decide the leadership issue. I don't see any difficulty in being able to do that. And B, the other question which Kumi asked, both before and after the election, you have to increase the number of your friends or your allies. Now that depends on how the dynamics of politics takes place. If the anti-Congress mode in the country and the performance of this government so far seems to be that uh, if, if it doesn't uh, improve and radically change the situation, then let's not expect that Congress will come down from uh, 200, 250. Then the change is going to be much bigger. And obviously, in such a situation, almost everybody who occupies the non-Congress area, space in every state, tends to gain uh, proportionately. Yeah, just allow me to break this from politics and get into my two questions on cricket, basically. Uh, <laughs> first thing is, uh, BCS created a property called IPL, and they seem to be uh, holding very firm to whatever they have created. They are, while they're getting players from uh, from other countries on basis of the financial cloud, at the same time, they're not allowing Indian players, even when they are free from national duty, to play like Big Bash or the SLPL or the English version and the Zimbabwean version. So why exactly is this the BCCI policy of not allowing their players to go and play simultaneously what like they are coming? And my second question is basically, it, it was five years since Kapil has, was banned and when it had to be solved, it was solved in 10 days. So thing is, why couldn't be it done earlier? And second, were you like kind of let down by the former players like Ben Sarkar asking for more money, Gavaskar asking for more money? Let me, let me, let me. I normally don't speak on cricket issues, but since you've asked, I'll give you a, several layers of answers you can get from it, sir. You see, when you ask the first question, have you ever looked at uh, the cricketing calendar in India? Now, the cricketing calendar in India is already overcrowded. In fact, there is some comment that it's more crowded than what it should be. If we try and look for a slot of even 15, 20 days in between for a new tournament or a new activity, I think it's almost impossible, if not very difficult, to find one. Now, in October, your domestic cricket will start. It goes on till March. Parallel to it, the tours, the international tours will begin. In April, the IPL will begin. It will get on till uh, uh, May, towards the later part of May. And then there is, it, it, it's quite warm in June, then the monsoons begin. So our teams go outside where the monsoons are not there at this time. And by the time they again come back, the whole season begins. No, because Harbhajan was allowed to play county cricket in England now, but he was not allowed to play the T20 version. Okay. What happens is that you you also have to decide on the extent of cricket each player plays, and then keeping all these factors in mind, a policy has been formulated, and the policy is that your regular cricket is so overcrowded in India that you now push your players into uh, uh, the T20 tournaments internationally in between, you go for three days. Uh, that's, that's the only kind of time that they're going to have. Our budget, <coughs> budget at the moment is not part of the team.